in previous classes in metallurgy i discussed the three elements iron in blast furnace copper in reverberatory furnace and later zinc three metals were discussed and the three were that is oxides were converted into metals and one more metal that is to be discussed that is aluminum the important ore of aluminum is bauxite bauxite is al2o3 2h2 in that bauxite two impurities are present one is sio2 second one is iron oxide if sio2 is present then it is called white bauxite the reason for that is sio2 is in normally white so it is called white bauxite if feo is present then it is called red bauxite so based on this they are named as white bauxite and red bauxite these two bauxites can be purified by different methods right and here look at this aluminum extraction important ore al2o3 2h2 called bauxite impurities iron oxide and sio2 this is this bauxite is called a red bauxite this is called white bauxite and this is purified by that is ore dressing by hals process this hals process is not given in the ncert book and this is purified by serpex process these two methods were not mentioned there so no need to learn just try to remember the names because sometimes in options the names may be appear hals process serpex process hals herald's process likewise so the bauxite in entire whether this method or this method both methods follow a simple principle that is leaching i discussed leaching in the first part that is in the ore dressing method leaching is generally by the use of aqueous solutions here aluminum is that is bauxite is purified by leaching method leaching process in leaching process naoh is used or na2co3 is also used because na2co3 when dissolved in water we get sodium hydroxide na2co3 sodium carbonate when dissolved in water we get sodium hydroxide so sodium hydroxide is used why because if sodium hydroxide is used this sodium hydroxide is base this sodium hydroxide is base it does not react with iron oxide so here naoh plus feo no reaction because this is a base and this is a base and feo remain as such in solid state so feo remain as such if sio2 is there this naoh reacts with sio2 why because it is a base this is acid to form the water soluble sodium silicate so this is removed that means this water soluble sodium silicate and not at all that is iron oxide not at all reacting with naoh can be separated so if bauxite has both impurities both impurities both can be removed by leaching 
in leaching NaOH is used by the usage of this basic substance, iron oxide is unaffected, SiO2 is removed. So this is the method. And in this, the sodium hydroxide reacts with alumina also, that is next to one, NaOH reacts with Al2O3 also. Why? Because this is amphotric. This is amphotric. This amphotric reacts with the base to form sodium meta aluminate. This is called meta aluminate. Meta aluminate. This may be also written like this Na, Al, OH4 times 2H2O. Both are right. This are this. Generally, aluminum has coordination number six. And so four ligands and two ligands are written. So both are right. This is water soluble. So observe these two. This is water soluble. This is also water soluble. And iron oxide is unaffected. So the iron oxide can be removed as solid. And infiltrate. Infiltrate. And these two will be present. So one impurity is removed by leaching. Still, there is some other SiO2 in the form of sodium silicate. And alumina is also converted into sodium metal aluminate. Actually, this is a solid substance. This is an aqueous solution. This is also aqueous solution. So our bauxite is brought into aqueous solution. Along with this solution, sodium silicate is also there. So here, iron oxide is removed. Now, this sodium metal aluminate is treated with CO2 along with some water molecules that is always there. Why? Because this is basic in nature. As a result of that, it is neutralized by CO2 to get back some alumina. In this case, it forms sodium bicarbonate and aluminum hydroxide. The sodium metal aluminate is water soluble and our bauxite is brought into water soluble alumina and it should be that is obtained back for that co2 is used and in this process this comes out as gelatinous precipitate gelatinous precipitate and this is a, you know all sodium salts are water soluble so finally this remains in filtrate this will be coming out in the form of precipitate so this is a unchanged Next, sodium silicate and sodium metal aluminate both are water soluble. So, these water soluble substances are removed as water insoluble aluminum hydroxide. The sodium bicarbonate is water soluble. Therefore, this is a removed, filtered off. The gelatinous precipitate filtered off. And now, this gelatinous precipitate is heated. This is a precipitate, is heated to high temperature. In such a case, it changes to Al2O3 and H2O. So look at, we got Al2O3 in solid state. Initially, we have taken alumina in solid state, and that is later changed into aqueous medium, and that is dissolved in water to remove the iron oxide. Iron oxide is removed, and after the dissolution, Aluminum hydroxide is obtained that is separated out from the filtrate and that is heated. Finally, we got Al2O3. In this, no impurities of iron oxide and SiO2. No impurities of iron oxide and SiO2. And finally, we'll have a pure bauxite. Pure bauxite. This method is called leaching. And after this uh, leaching process, impurities were removed. In the second case, it should be reduced into aluminium. That can be done like this. So this is called benefaction or overdressing. And in the second stage, stage two, that is reduction of alumina into aluminium. Reduction of alumina into aluminium. This can be done by all Harold's process. 
Hall's Herold's process. In this Hall's Herold's process, this is nothing but electrolysis. This is nothing but electrolysis. Here, we are not using any coke as that is directly in the pyrometallurgy. It is in the electrolysis process. By making use of electrolysis, it can be reduced with the help of coke. In the previous cases, it was not like that. Zinc oxide is reduced by coke at 1500 degrees centigrade. Copper oxide is reduced by coke at nearly 300 degrees centigrade. Likewise, iron oxide is reduced by coke at nearly 1500 degrees centigrade. And here it is not likewise. It is in the electrolysis process, aluminum oxide is reduced by the coke. Look at this how. In the electrolysis process, there is an anode and cathode. And the process will be like this. And this is a, a simple steel tank. And it is aligned with the cathode. This is cathode, carbon rod, carbon. And here, electrolyte is taken. Electrolyte, which allows current, electrolyte. And graphite rods are used. Graphite. This acts as anode. This acts as cathode. Carbon line acts as cathode. Graphite rods act as anode. These graphite rods are suspended here. And electrolyte. The electrolyte is this. Electrolyte is Al2O3 bauxite and NaEF and ALS3, three moles. This is called cryolite. This aluminum oxide is a stony material, almost just like stones. Generally, they are used in gemstones, especially in ornamental wear. Therefore, this is not a conductor of electricity. In the electrolysis, it should be a good conductor. It is not a conductor of electricity. As a result, we are employing this. This allows the current through it, and later it causes current into aluminum oxide. So this is called cryolite, and this is also added CaF2 plus CaF2. This is called fluor spar, and this the function of this is the function of this is reduces melting point of Al2. O3. You know very well if any impurity is available, that impurity depresses the melting point, increase the boiling point. Impurities always increase the boiling point, impurities always decrease the melting point. So this calcium fluoride is used to reduce the melting point of aluminum oxide. Why it is to be done? Why? Because this is a very stony material to brought that is especially into the liquid state. It requires a lot of temperature in the industry. And in such a case, electricity bills are un that is unpredictable. As a result, to reduce the expenditure, this calcium fluoride is used. And this calcium fluoride decreases the melting point of aluminum oxide. So this is the function of this. And what is this function? This is a conductor which allows current through it. What is the function of this? This is a, a melting point reducer because it is impurity. And now look at this. On electrolysis, on electrolysis, this cryolite, NA3, ALF6, cryolite, in which ALF3 decomposed into Al plus 3 and F minus. And yet, cathode, always at cathode reduction takes place. Always at cathode, cations will be deposited. So Al plus 3 reduced to Al by taking three electrons. This is at cathode. At the anode, fluoride is changed into fluorine and release of electrons. Release of electrons. Now, this fluorine, this fluorine is a powerful substance which reacts with aluminum oxide and changes into aluminum fluoride. This fluorine reacts with aluminum oxide and changes into aluminum fluoride 
and oxygen. Now, this aluminum fluoride is processed like this. Initially, in cryolite, aluminum fluoride is there that begins the reaction like this. And later, this aluminum fluoride changes into like this. The process is repeated like this. So the function of this fluorine that is, which converts aluminum oxide, which is a stony material, into a good electrolyte, into aluminum fluoride. Now aluminum fluoride changes into Al plus three and F minus. Once again, aluminum is reduced as cathode. Now what is happening? Yet anode. O2 is liberating. Look at this. O2 is liberating. This is the process. At anode O2 is liberating. This O2 reacts with carbon. This O2 reacts with carbon that is reduces and to form carbon monoxide, right? So finally, these anode rods are disappearing. These anode rods are disappearing. So this entire process takes place in electrolysis. So this entire process takes place in electrolysis. It doesn't appear. Finally, the carbon rod consumes into carbon monoxide and the carbon rods from time to time carbon rods are removed. So oxygen liberates, carbon combines, and carbon monoxide is evolved. The carbon dots are removed. In textbook, it is given like this. Al2O3 plus C changes into Al plus CO. So it appears as carbon acts as a reducing agent for aluminum oxide into aluminum. So carbon acts as a, actually this mechanism takes place. So this is a simple reaction given there. Listen carefully. This is a simple reaction. It appears as aluminum oxide is reduced by coke but actually the aluminum oxide is not reduced by coke directly this is the process involved this process is a cyclic process in cryolite it forms in cryolite it forms after that the fluorine evolves but this is not given in the book and this is the final so all the four metals in your syllabus can be reduced by coke so this is the final that is in book next book it is given like so this is about the aluminium. This is called Hall's Herald's process. So carbon rods act as reducing agent. That is graphite rods act as reducing agent. It reduces aluminum oxide into aluminum. Itself changes into carbon monoxide. This is the aluminum extraction. So all four metals, that is from oxides to metals. And next, in the third stage, first stage is ore dressing, second stage is getting metal from the ore, third stage is refining. So in the last stage, refining. Refining. The metals that were obtained in any process may not be 100% pure and never any substance that is available in the nature is 100% pure. So all are impure. So impurities should be removed. Removal of impurities of the metals. So here, removal of impurities from metals is called refining. In this refining, there are these methods. Distillation. Distillation. Second method. Liquation. Distillation. Liquation. Third method. Polling. Not related election. It is a different talk. Polling, it's not related to the next one. Electrolytic refining. Electrolytic refining. Next one. John 
refining and finally vapor phase refining vapor phase refining and one more method was also there that is just chromatography method that was not specified clearly so just distillation liquidation boiling electrolytic refining zone refining and vapor phase refining now we'll look at one by one in first method in distillation this is for zinc and mercury in 3d series the lowest melting point is zinc in 5d series mercury distillation means conversion of substance into vapor so these metals are directly converted into vapors leaving impurities whenever they are heated so here low melting points or low boil distillation is applied for boiling a low boiling point metals that is zinc and mercury change into vapor state distillation leaving high mel high boiling point impurities so impurities are high boiling point metals are low boiling point that's why this method is applied so it is applied for zinc and mercury so metals have high boiling point so this is called distillation these two are the examples next second method liquidation in liquidation tin example tin e subjected to this on a slope of hearth that is nothing but one kind of heating area hearth on a slope of hearth it is heated tin has tin has low melting point than impurities tin has low melting point than impurities so impurities remain there tin flows out so tin melting point is low so melting point of tin is low here the boiling point of metals is low here melting point of tin is low and impurities are having high melting points it can be removed this is the third one is important method electrolytic refining i'll tell you the cooling later refining in this sir impure metal always acts as anode pure metal acts as cathode impure metal acts as anode pure metal acts as cathode metal salt solution acts as electrolyte i'll tell you impure metal always acts as anode pure metal always acts as cathode the metal salt solution acts as electrolyte for example silver silver for example this is silver look at this two electrodes like this this is silver this is also silver plate this is cathode this is anode impure metal is to be purified impure metal is to be purified and pure metal is taken as a plate and here it is silver nitrate solution is taken silver nitrate agno3 and it is electrolyzed yet anode always oxidation takes place that anode always oxidation takes place therefore 
this changes to ag plus and f1 yet the cathode always reduction takes place this ag plus ion takes electrons and changes to ag listen this is silver comes to like this ag plus and the so far that is formed silver ion deposits here whatever the amount of silver that comes the same silver will be deposit on the cathode so the amount that is dissolved at anode is equal to the amount that is deposited at cathode this is explained in the electrochemistry right some impurities will be there that impurity will be left behind here this is called anode mud mud means some impurities so look at this this impure metal always changes into cation the cation that deposits here this remains as such this is the best method of purification because each and every atom being refined because silver if one mole of silver is there 108 grams of silver is there each and every atom is refined so this is the purest form of metal that is obtaining in the metallurgical process if you consider gold impure gold as acts as anode pure gold acts as cathode if we consider zinc impure zinc acts as anode pure zinc acts as cathode if both are zinc and here zinc nitrate if copper is taken copper nitrate aluminum is taken likewise whatever the metal you take the metal solution should be taken as the electrolyte so this is the best method that is electrolytic refinement this is also in electrochemistry this is also present in the electrochemistry this is called electrolytic refining and polling is there this polling polling literally means stirring metal oxides with the green poles of wood freshly cut wood is green in color that has chlorophyll that chlorophyll has carbon that carbon acts as a reducing agent which is a cheaper method because it is available straight away in any field so there is no need of uh, there is a apply of any expenditure there so polling is nothing but stirring metal oxide with green poles especially for copper oxide blister copper because copper oxide can be reduced at 350 degrees only because it is very unstable oxide hence the polling can be done so here copper oxide plus green poles green poles upon strong heating then it changes into copper and carbon bond where this carbon is obtained from hydrocarbon green poles have hydrocarbons so copper oxide this is, you have to remember this example copper oxide copper oxide act that is very low melting point it can be easily decomposed at low temperature so this can be purified by polling method this is another another method of refining method and next method vapor phase refining in this nickel is purified this method is called mons process called a mons process in this the principle is look at this nickel which is to be purified is it treated with carbon monoxide and now at 330 to 360 kelvin it changes into nickel tetra carbonyl as gas this is a solid this is a gas nickel having some impurities impurities do not react with carbon monoxide impurities do not react with carbon monoxide it reacts only with nickel changes into nickel tetra carbonyl this is in which state gas state this is in solid state therefore metal is converted into gas state and now this is obtained separately later this nickel carbonyl is heated strongly above this temperature nearly 450 and it changes back 
into nickel and carbon monoxide. So impurities remain in the same furnace. Nickel comes out of the furnace and changes into gas. That gas is collected. Later, that gas is heated, and finally, nickel is obtained in the form of solid state, and carbon monoxide will be leaving from the that is chamber. So this is the called this is called vapor phase, and this process name is important called Mons process. In this, the principle is that nickel changes into complex. Nickel changes into complex. Carbon monoxide is a powerful ligand, hence this can be done. A very strong ligand, it forms complex. This is one example called Mons process. The second example is Van Arkel method. This is a special applied for zirconium. Zirconium and there is another metal example, zirconium. Zirconium is heated with iodine to form ZRI4. Tell me the same principle. Zirconium is in solid state. Iodine, iodine vapors are used. And finally, this changes into gaseous state. And this is heated. Now, zirconium iodide, ZRI4, upon heating very strongly, then this temperature, then this ZR changes into like this. This is a gaseous state, and this is a solid. So the principle is the impure zirconium, this is zirconium, the impure zirconium is changed into ZRI4 complex. ZRI4 is heated further, and zirconium is obtained. So the similar principle is applied. So this is called, that is a vapor phase refining. This method is called Van Arkel method. Van Arkel method. This method is called Mons process. This is called another important vapor phase refining. Out of all the refining process, the best method is electrolysis method. And last one is, Zone refining. Zone refining. And in this method, the rod having the rod having impurities is heated in a zone, zone of heating. Zone of heating. And it is placed in a just a, a tub type vessel. And this rod is Moving from one end to other end, for example, if this rod is heated in this zone, in this, the impurities melt, but not metal. Here, the impurities melt, but not metal. Therefore, impurities will come out and metal remains in the rod. The impurities will be slowly drained out. And this rod is just moving from one end to other end. If this rod moves further away, if it comes, that means this portion comes under this zone, in that the impurities will be under, that is a liquid state, the metal remains in the same rod. Likewise, the rod moves from one end to other end. The principle is metal has high melting point, high melting point than impurities. Impurities melt in the zone, metals remain as such. Finally, the impurities are removed and it can be separated. This is the zone refining. This is a reverse process to that of liquidation. This is a reverse process to that of liquidation. In liquidation, tin has a low melting point, whereas in zone refining, metal has high melting point. That is to be checked. So try to check that. So in this zone refining, after electrolysis process, this is the best one. Zone refining is the best one to get pure metal. And this is about the metallurgy.